If you caught yesterday's show, I told you that David Peterson was overrated. That might be wrong. I also told you Cutter Crawford wouldn't pitch well yesterday. That was definitely wrong. But I also told you the Red Sox bullpen stinks. And they do stink. And we got that over in Red Sox Mets. Mark Zinno, he hit the Pirates' first five. We had a joint effort on the Orioles' team total. Oh, we- so break out the broom. It was a 3-0 and sweep on the morning wager yesterday. Mark, good job to us. Listen, listen, we, we didn't do anything, okay? You got lucky as spit, okay? That was what you got. You got lucky. We didn't. I went 2-0. and You got lucky. There's a difference. Okay. Oh, I didn't. Well, I wasn't on board the Orioles team total. That was the you had to bully me into taking that Orioles team That's total. Usually no, how that was a joint yes. effort. And <laughs> no, I, I got that one, that one got out in the second damn inning. They scored over five and a half runs. My God, the easiest bet I made all day. Crying all right. Well, yeah, you, got, you, got, you got lucky. Okay, David Peterson, you were cursing his name via text. In fact, there was one text. That said, David Peterson, I think, just won the Cy Young Award this year. And, I, yeah, I told you. I came here and I told everybody yesterday, I'm going to come here and tell you, don't, I told you so. I told you don't do it. You did it. You got lucky. Better to be lucky than good. But don't sit here and celebrate today. You're not taking a victory lap on David Peterson. I am. I'm actually going to start running around while wait. you do your breakdown here wait. on the first five. I can't wait or, until wait. the next five days rolls around and David Peterson shows up again, and you're absolutely going to be dumb enough to bet against him again. Probably will. Yeah, I know you. That's the point. <laughs> I, I know you're you're going to sit here and tell all the, 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 the viewers of the Morning Wager, which, oh, by the way, might be the most watched show on Wager Talk TV. I'll keep patting ourselves on the back about that. But nonetheless, you will tell – yes, get high. Um, you, you will absolutely <laughs> sit here and try to tell all these people about his expected ERA, his actual ERA, and how big the delta is, and everyone's going to sit there, and they're going to roll their eyes at you and jump in the comment section and call you a moron, and they're right. So I'm not going to sit here and listen to you talk about David Peterson anymore. You got lucky. Deal with it. Over. Winner. All right, Mark Zitto. You've already (laughs) ranted once on this program. And by God, you're about to rant again because your half of the double play is in this Braves-Rockies game. And I know for a fact, because I listened to you rant to me about it about a half hour ago on the phone, that you are apoplectic about the state of the Atlanta Braves lineup at the moment yet you still like them to go over their team total against the worst pitching staff in Major League Baseball. Listen, I'm going to advise you guys right now. I'm making a purely emotional bet because I'm pissed off. Because my client play last night, one of them, was the Braves team total over four and a half because they were facing a pitcher in Kyle Freeland, whose ERA is about 7,000 on the road this year. The Rockies have the worst starting staff in baseball. They have the worst bullpen in baseball. And these freaking humps on the Atlanta Braves, I I, I, I said to all my buddies last night, who are Braves fans. How do you root for this team? How, how the hell do you root for this team? They are disgusting. They couldn't get more than three freaking runs against the pitiful Colorado Rockies pitching. Like, oh my God. How the hell did I not win that bet last night? Like, I, I, I was, I, apoplectic isn't a word. Now I'm pissed. Yes, it is. So now I'm back again today with the Braves team total over because these schmucks, these low life freaking stinkers, if they can't get four and a half runs today or five, because you can't get a half run. But if they can't get five runs today, ugh, just done. So now I'm pissed off, and, and now I'm coming back with the same thing today to watch these losers who couldn't hit water if they fell out of a boat, okay? I, I mean, just, you know, they, they, they suck. The Braves' offense is terrible. I don't even know why. This team shouldn't even belong in the playoffs. The seventh, the seventh wild card, seventh playoff spot in baseball sucks. The Braves are not a playoff team. They don't belong in the playoffs. Their offense is terrible. Charlie Morton's 107 years old. I don't know who the hell Bradley Blaylock is, but his freaking ERA is over five. His numbers on the road are even worse. And yet the worst bullpen in all of baseball somehow shut down the Braves' offense. Oh my God. Okay, I think I'm done. That's Braves good. over four. That's the – Braves over four and a half. That is Mark Zinno, a man who believes the New York Yankees and Atlanta Braves, who are combined 29 games over 500, are the Chicago White Sox. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. (laughs) Why not? Let's do it. Yes. Because the other thing that I got wrong last night was the over in Washington and Miami over eight and a half. Of course, they landed on seven because Miami left half of Cuba on base last night. One for eight runners in the position. Okay, there were dudes on rafts, on log rafts, like El Duque Hernandez sitting on the base pass, and the Miami Marlins couldn't get him home. I watched, well, I, I lost what? two games last night on people who couldn't get a hit, who couldn't score in a whorehouse with a fistful of hundreds, who couldn't do anything offensive other than be offensive. 
You're very upset this morning, and I'm going to talk about the Miami Marlins right now, okay, Mark? There you go, okay? Talk, we'll throw you a life raft, okay? It's it, You know, your birthday wasn't that long ago. Anyway, all right, Miami Marlins, Washington Nationals. We're going to talk about that for my half of the double play. I was wrong on Miami last night. I thought it was a good price to fade Patrick Corbin. Guess what? Patrick Corbin, whose contract is coming up at the end of the year, apparently wants to remain in Major League Baseball because he's now turned in four straight good starts. I don't know what's going on there. But Mark, I look at the price shift from yesterday to today. Miami closed as a short home favorite, as you know, yesterday. Now they're a home dog, and and I don't agree with the the shift in price. I think that was just a deal where, you know, I guess, you know, odds makers, they they set a trap that I fell for with Corbin or whatever, but there's no reason to see this shift in price. I think Miami and Washington are honestly two pretty even teams. Now, Belozo... Uh, Beloza, who, who we at first thought was a nice Italian boy, that's actually not true at all. Nope, uh, he's not, not true. Italian. Uh, it's not Italian at all. Not we got Italian. that one wrong. No, he's not Italian at all. He has given up six. He had no, don't start that. Uh, he, he's given up six runs at back to back starts, no matter his home country. Uh, I think he bounces back at home. Look, Washington, the key to that game yesterday. Okay, why they won five to two was the home run ball. This is a team that doesn't hit a lot of home runs on the road. Uh, and this is a team that doesn't hit well on the road. Uh, I think I think the White Sox are the only team that have homered less on the road than Washington. So go figure. They hit a couple last night for the win. I don't see it happening today. I think Belozo keeps the ball in the ballpark. Mackenzie Gore, he is a lefty. Okay, he starts for Washington today. Miami coming into the series, okay, had been doing quite well against Southpaws at home. Top six in what? WRC plus and OPS. Since August 1st against Southpaws, I think it's a reversal of fortune. The Miami Marlins, Zeno, are 0-8 against Washington this year. They get the elusive win today. Miami Marlins, as an underdog, is my half of the double play to go along with Mark Zeno's impassioned play on the Braves team total over. We will be getting to our show best bets in just a little bit, but please... Uh, comment down below with your favorite Major League Baseball bets for Wednesday. We're also going to be talking about a little NFL. Maybe it's time to fade the public in week one. Stay tuned for that. Drop your favorite NFL bets for week one in the comment section below. And if you already haven't smashed that like button, my goodness, we've given you so many reasons to already. Uh, here's something to like as well. Three-day all-access, $49. That's a $29 savings. We talked about this yesterday. Great offer going on right now at wagertalk.com. And the best thing is, well, you can use it on both Mark. You can add myself. You can. It's unlimited how many handicappers you can use it on. And you can pick when you want to start. So if you want to wait until the weekend so you get all of our college football picks on Saturday, all of our NFL picks on Sunday, you can do that. Just name whatever you want it to start, but it is $49 for three days worth of winners. I'm looking to bounce back on the diamond tonight. I'll have two plays, a side and a total. Um, the side's going to be Miami. I gave you that one for free. So there you go. Loyal listeners of the morning wager. Mark Zeno, uh, before we get to our I, best I, bet, I, I what, what do you have on tap for Wednesday? I, I try to convince Brian Power that the Miami Marlins plus one and a half on the run line was a good play, but they're home tonight. So we can't take the one and a half, get the one and a half of the home. But no, no, I, I like taking the one and a half at the home. That That's, that's so take uh, your impression and stick it where the sun don't shine, pal. All right. Well, Tell the people what you've got on Wednesday. Because we're only going to get eight at bats. And David Peterson is expected ERA is way higher than his regular one. It is. <laughs> it is. No matter how you want to talk, that's the case. It was his birthday yesterday. Uh, yeah, listen. Um, I, I didn't tell say you what, happy guys, birthday to him. Um, in today's package, uh, we'll have some baseball plays. I'm going to release my Thursday night uh, play tonight uh, for everybody. It'll be part of today's package. If you get it, go to WT.buzz slash MZ. So my, my play in Thursday night football will be part of today's package. So you guys will get that along with baseball picks for today. WT.buzz slash MZ again, that three day pass. You want Thursday, Friday, Saturday guys through college football. Great time to pick up that three day pass right now. Again, WT.buzz slash MZ. I hope Miami does not leave all of Cuba on base tonight. You did such a quick and uh, tight job of promoting there. I didn't even have time. I went to Baseball Savant to see what uh, Peterson's new expected ERA is, but uh, maybe I'll give that to the people later on. Anyway, oh, it is oh, show man. best, but no, oh, I, oh, all right, you want me to look it up? All right, I'll look it up here. Okay, we're going to go to pitchers. Okay, no, we're going to hit search. Had to, have, had to have dropped after last night's performance. Yes. Oh, it did a little bit. Eh, it's still 4.85 for the year. Still don't Kill like the it. the Peterson right. makes league baseball. Yeah. 
It's not anymore. Reynaldo Lopez has a bigger gap now. All right, let's get to our show best bet. You know who? You, you know who's expected ERA uh, is probably negative at this point <laughs> is the great Bowden Francis of Toronto. This guy, in his last four starts, has given up six hits. He's gone seven innings in three of those while giving up one hit. We and we could get him plus half a run in the first five. You got a little uh, lay a little bit of juice to do so. But we will do so against Dan Alexander's Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, we like the starting pitching matchup for Toronto's perspective in this one, Mr. Mark Zinno. Yeah, we do. Uh, you just mentioned all the accolades about Bowden Francis, who uh, we played K-Prop last time over five and a half, and he didn't get there. Stinker. Uh, anyway, but I, he's over five and a half again today. I would take a look at that, too, if you like the prop market. But uh, Bowden Francis has been on the mound. Toronto has won four straight when he started. So there's plenty of reason to like him. Again, afternoon tilt here, 307 Eastern. So make sure you guys uh, get this one in early. But Christopher Sanchez, who's been pretty good this year for the most part for the Phillies. I'll defer to Dan Alexander on that. A couple of negatives against him. One, his ERA on the road is 2.2 runs higher than it is at home. And his 12 starts, the Phillies are just 2-6. and six. He's uh, opposing hitters are batting 324 against him. Not only that, day game, Christopher Sanchez ERA during the day, 6.54. So he is not a good early riser. He needs to get up, get out, and uh, and and do really well uh, in the evening because he is not a daytime pitcher. So now here's the only rub of this thing that makes it a little bit, you know, for pause. Toronto doesn't hit lefties well, particularly at home. They're bottom 10 in OPS and WRC plus and batting average against lefties at home on the season. So um, I hope that doesn't negate uh, Sanchez, whose numbers are, you know, really bad, as I just told you. Sanchez actually faced the Blue Jays in Philly earlier this year. I think he went seven innings, gave up just one run. So he's seen this lineup before. Not sure if that really helps him here, but I like getting a half run early on with Bowden Francis on there. Francis has proven he can handle the tough lineups. He went seven innings, gave up one run against the Orioles. So it's not like he's uh, immune from facing good lineups. So uh, I think we're in a good spot here to take the half run in the first five, BP. Yeah, hopefully it won't take many runs with Francis on the mound for Toronto to get the job done in the first five, and then we don't have to worry about that bullpen, which can always be an adventure north of the border. So that is your show best bet, taking the Blue Jays on the first five run line. Let us know what you think about that down in the comments section below. And we now make the hard right turn to the National Football League. And Mark, uh, you have a list of the five most public sides as of now in week one. And I think our consensus when looking at this list is we disagree with all of these bets. But would you like to lay out what who the public is on uh, as sure. of Wednesday for week one? Sure. Uh, according to one sports book, 78% of the bets are on the Texans minus two and a half, 77% on the Dolphins minus three, 70% on the Vikings minus one and a half, 67% on the Bengals minus nine, and 66% on the Lions minus three and a half. I can tell you unequivocally, I'm on the opposite side of four of those games. Um, right off the bat. So, uh, I, I mean, and if you ever wanted to lick your lips and salivate at fading the public, this is a perfect spot to do it, particularly um, for my money with the Texans and the Bengals. Uh, love the Colts in week one. Uh, and as soon as I get confirmation that Jamar Chase is not playing week one, I'm absolutely going to fire on the New England Patriots uh, with Jacoby Brissett. <laughs> because, again, Jacoby Brissett isn't going to win this game, but he's good enough to keep it close and not make mistakes. He's proven that time and time again. Um, that's that's all he's good enough for. So um, I actually like the Giants enough to be a survivor pick in week one. So uh, that's, that's how crazy that's I am. Ballsy. Well, because it's the only game I think they can actually win at home. Okay. So, um, and yes, uh, even though I still am uh, pissed uh, about the Rams not covering their freaking playoff spread because Sean McVay decided to be a pansy, moron, idiot, He's got good hair, though. Anyway, uh, I think the Rams keep this thing close enough. I have good hair, too. And you know what I like to do? I like going for it on fourth down. You know, it was so funny that you mentioned that Detroit, as as I as you uh, rehashed that playoff game between Detroit and Rams, everyone killed Dan Alexander. Or Dan, they didn't kill them. My God, Dan Alexander. No, they didn't kill you. Thank you uh, for, by the way, waking up early to do the show. Uh, Dan Campbell. I had Dan Alexander on the line. Dan Campbell, okay. Uh, they killed him in the for the NFC Championship for how aggressive he was. But I think, and you and I disagree. 
uh, about Campbell's strategy in that game, Mark. But I think you would agree with me that the worst bit of coaching in the playoffs last year was what well, McVay did. did, how conservative he was in that game. Totally, they, they totally won, Detroit won the game because Campbell was aggressive. McVay, punting on the opponent's side of the field in the last yeah. in the last terrible. couple of minutes of a game in 2024? He was terrible. He was terrible. Punting? Absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. And they shouldn't even have lost that game. The Rams actually should have won that game. Um, no, but the, were, the Lions were aggressive, and the and, and the Rams were not in the red zone. They kept settling for field goals. Kelly Stewart, her famous phrase, kicking is for losers. It was that day. It was um, that day. I, I mean, guys, look, week one is one of the hardest weeks. Week one and week 18 now, the first week and the last yes. week, are typically two of the hardest weeks to bet in the NFL. Um, I would caution you, you know, at this point, just in general, any team laying nine feels like – a dangerous proposition because you just don't know how prepared anybody really is. Furthermore, I mean, I mean look, we, we everybody generally believes that the Patriots are going to be the worst team uh, in the league this year, at least one of them. So it's easy to jump on against them. However, um, I don't think that much of Zach Taylor. I think he's a really bad coach. Uh, I think he's been bailed out by, by Joe Burrow and really good players for a while. Um, and and I, I just don't trust him at all. And I certainly don't trust him to call a game laying nine points. So, um, you know, I'd stay away from any of the bigger numbers out there, personally. Uh, it's just, it, it's too much variance that can come into play. So, uh, do what you like with your own money. But, and I don't really, I'll be honest with you, with the Dolphins, I don't, the Dolphins, Jags, I don't get a really good feel in that game. It, it's probably a stay away for me. I just, you know, I, I don't really, I'm not too fond of either team. Yeah. Uh, well, I like the Jaguars. I talked about it earlier this week. I waited to talk today. I think the Jaguars are un an under-the-radar team. Every year, there's a team that no one's talking team. about. Well, I know. You hate every coach, okay? We, it's been well-documented. Yeah, I just, I just right. hate the bad ones and the stupid ones. And Doug Peterson okay, well, sucks. Well, I'll tell you what, okay? One Dan Alexander a Super Bowl once, okay? No, anyway. Frank, Frank Reich won that Super Bowl. Frank okay, Reich there's won that Super Bowl. the thumbs up. There Frank, we go. That had to be. Yes, oh, okay. Doug Peterson is a moron. <laughs> He's a bad coach, all right? Keep, he is oh. so overrated, it's ridiculous. It's like, oh, look what. What he, look what he did. <laughs> look what he did with Trevor Lawrence. His previous coach was Urban freaking Meyer, okay? Who cared more about rubbing up on college co-eds and coaching football. So there's wow. that. Exactly. There we go. The I'll tell you what, we're all on you. Half thumbs up, half thumbs down. Yes, that was a well, that's what we call a coaching upgrade in the business. Uh Eric Peterson over Urban Meyer. He was stealing a paycheck. Look, I, I think Trevor Lawrence, believe it or not, is is gonna have a big year. I I think he justifies that contract. He was really <laughs> betrayed by drops and turnovers last year. I'm telling you, wow. Trevor Lawrence is live wow. to be the NFL pet. You heard it, you want a hot take? Trevor Lawrence, oh NFL passing leader this year. Ben. I have never seen a more overrated quarterback make so much money for accomplishing nothing but playing eight good games. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Jordan Love did the same thing. Yeah. Those, those two dudes should have, never been paid. should have never been paid the contracts that they were paid. Eight games is don't all they played. It. Eight good games. That's it. All right. Well, I'll tell you, I think the Colts are a great teaser piece, by the way, to get back to the subject at hand this week. If who they, does, who doesn't love a good teaser piece? You want who a good teaser? Love a good piece? teaser? Yes. I love a good piece. Let me tell you something. My good piece uh, yeah, is Colts, I, and that's Bills. What, Colts and Bills teaser is the way to go. Yes. Uh, speaking of a good piece, how about your girl Patty Johnson, by the way? Good I mean, piece? <laughs> I, I don't like to kiss and tell. So okay. I'm, 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 there we go. Well, <laughs> if you would like more talk from us today, guess what? You're going to get it because... Dan Alexander will be in front of the camera with us on first pitch. Oh, boy. There we go. Oh, come on. Joe Ranieri may have regained the control. Yeah, All exactly. right. Like, like, comment, or subscribe, and subscribe. Do all three of those things. We'll see you on first pitch. Thank you, everybody.